All right, guys, we're going to jump into the meat segment today. And today I've got some special bacon for you. I've got the local CEO and owner of Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling. And with me today, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you, Yaden. What's happening? How's it going? Great, Yaden. How are you today, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. We just finished an episode of Rocky Mountain Rewind and uh, just got done with the Twitch thing. So now I'm on, on here with you. So I was looking forward to us doing this. Yeah, definitely. I've been looking forward to speaking to you as well. Uh, why I want to tell my listeners out there today why we got you on. Well, we got a special event coming up on September 26th. What can you tell me about that, Yaden? So that's our return to charge television taping. So we uh, obviously haven't taped any television since March. That's when we started doing the Rewind show on Twitch to kind of keep people uh, seeing uh, content uh, every week and now every day, really, uh, as we were working through this. And Milestone 10 on August 29th, we returned to taping live, and that was our 10-year anniversary. So now we're returning to taping our weekly television show, Charged. We'll get two episodes taped, and it'll be uh, streaming on Twitch for those that can't make it live. It's a limited engagement, so uh, tickets go pretty quick for that. But if you're a subscriber on Twitch, you can watch it live as it streams. So it's pretty exciting to get back to TV. That's what I'm excited about. I follow you guys there on Twitch. I was actually watching you guys a little bit this morning. And I also have caught a little bit of what my listeners might know uh, or might not know about you is uh, you guys run a camp over there. And uh, tell me a little bit about that and who you have been partnered up with here recently um, there at the uh, camp or the gym, you should say. Right, so we uh, have our own wrestling academy. It's uh, founded in 2014, and it was the Mercury Pro Wrestling Academy, and then we changed the name to Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling Academy. But we have uh, recently partnered with Ohio Valley Wrestling in Louisville, Kentucky, and have become an Al Snow Wrestling Academy. So the school is officially now ASWA Rocky Mountain, and we are affiliated with Ohio Valley Wrestling. We train uh, at Fast Performance, which is a uh, performance – and fitness facility there in Denver. They specialize in baseball training. So they've got some pitching tunnels, some batting cages. We have a strength and conditioning coach, our head of performance, Scotty Long, who's an athletic trainer with the Colorado Mammoth Indoor Lacrosse team. So he runs the strength and conditioning classes uh, with a lot of our talent. And then we're in ring Mondays through Thursdays there. A lot going on there at the school, but it's pretty exciting to be affiliated now with the legendary Ohio Valley Wrestling and Al Snow. So a uh, lot, lot to look forward to as we kind of get back into everything. Absolutely. And me and Yaden have talked here recently before. And, uh, you know, like I've expressed to him, my firm belief, um, if you're a wrestling fan, we all know that you have to start somewhere and mm -hmm. it's people like you guys out there that train the people, get the guys, you know, and girls, I should say, uh, going, you know, getting the techniques down, stuff like that. And then, you know, you kind of got, you, you guys go unlooked or unheard of most of the time. And that's why I'm bringing you guys on. Cause I want to get this out there a little bit more that we do have something fabulous like that going on here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for the people that don't know much about you, Jaden, won't you tell us a little bit where you, uh, how long you've been in the business and where you kind of came from? So I started in 2001, and I grew up not a wrestling fan. Like, nobody in my family was really into wrestling. Uh, I, I had a, uh, my best friend in Texas when we lived there in my elementary school years were in Corsicana, Texas. And I remember he would watch WWF, and I would see it on when I would stay the night at his house. I remember a couple – I have a couple memories of like it being on TV, seeing the Macho Man. I always thought the Macho Man was pretty awesome. And you didn't have to watch professional wrestling to know Macho Man, Hulk Hogan. You saw them in, 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 in pop culture. You saw them in commercials and on Arsenio Hall and places like that. So I, I knew what it was. Wasn't really a fan of it, though. I was a big baseball fan. I, I love baseball. That's what I wanted to do was, was play professional baseball. And my senior year of high school, I met a group of guys in 1999 uh, working at the mall at Richland, the Richland Mall in Ontario, Ohio. I worked at the Metabolife stand selling the Metabolife pills. I think very, very early diet pills. I don't think, I think that was kind of its infancy. I don't remember, I remember a lot. Of those. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. they were in our mall in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. And I worked there and then next to me was a uh, way of uh, the beanie wagons, what it was called. And it was the kiosk full of beanie babies. Cause this was at the height of the beanie baby uh, craze. So I got to know these two guys, uh, Bill and Joe, and they were backyard wrestlers and they wrestled at their friend in Ontario, Ohio. They wrestled in their friend's living room. 
and they'd been doing it for a couple of years, actually, invited me over to hang out with them. I had watched, I'd gotten interested in wrestling around 97, uh, 97, 98, you know, the Mike Tyson being involved uh, with, with WWF piqued my interest because I grew up loving Mike Tyson because I, you know, kid of the 80s and, and 90s. Me too, the same here, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so I was interested. I went in, hung out with these guys, and then, you know, it just one thing led to another. I got officially trained in 2001, and then here we are in 2020, and I'm still, still doing it. So that's kind, of the, that's kind of the path that led me here. Yeah, 19 years strong. That's a pretty long time. You know, there's a lot of wrestlers that, you know, can't last but maybe five years, especially now with the injuries, concussions, and things mm-hmm. like that. Uh, you know, people, people have listened uh, here recently on my podcast, and I mentioned a little bit about you guys. And, you know, I found out from Rocky Pro, uh, Rocky Pro is what I like to call it, um, coming out of the AEW show, and you guys were in mass, I mean, just mass presence out there. You guys are handing out your flyers, you know, word mm-hmm. of mouth spreading the word and for a lot of my listeners out there don't know this or realize this you guys have uh produced some heavy talent and uh, right now we got a current talent that in my eyes is probably the baddest gimmick the best lo- looking gimmick and probably uh the scariest in the girls <laughs> girls uh, division if you ask me and that's abaddon what you can, right what could you tell me about that just a just an example of somebody who who came in, found her way, believed in what she was doing, worked very hard, uh, trained trained with us for for a couple years, and really put put her all into what she was doing, and had a had a never give up attitude, and was was able to took full advantage of the opportunity to very early on in her wrestling career. Uh, do more than just wrestle in a ring. Like she took full advantage of the television production and making it a big deal. And having the opportunity to work on TV that early on is pretty rare. So uh, she took full advantage of it and just did not quit. And she was given an opportunity and she seized that opportunity and then just ran with it and just doing very well. So uh, it's just, a, it's a great story. And it's a great example of when you just, you get in there, you, you, the first step is you got to show up. And then the second step is you got to keep showing up and then you got to keep working hard and you got to never give up. And, and that's, it's pretty exciting to see, to see things like that. You know, we, every time we watch Otis in, in, in WWE, Otis trained here uh, from 2015 to 2016. So as you see Otis uh, succeeding and he another, get another example of somebody that just showed up, did the work, uh, had a great attitude about it. And if you look on to ring of honor, uh, Dak Draper, uh, was here, a uh, Colorado guy, and uh, helped coach at the school for a while. And Royce Isaacs out there at NWA, you know, was also someone that came from Colorado, uh, wrestled at various places, uh, was a student at the, at the school and, and helped coach too before leaving. So these are all people that just, they, they, they find the, the opportunities, the platforms, and they work really hard and they take full advantage of that. And then when their opportunities pop up, they take full advantage of those opportunities. So it's great to see. And that's what I love the most about, you know, the local stuff, you know, like I guarantee you my listeners out there had no idea. That was going to actually be my next question, you know, give my listeners some more big names out there that came through the Academy. And, you know, it just, that's my biggest point is, you know, you got to start somewhere, like you said, and then you got to put the time in. And uh, I'm here to make sure that people like you guys don't go unnoticed. And, you know, once again, we're talking with Yaden on the E's and B's podcast. And we got the charge tapings are coming back. He's pretty yes. excited. I'm excited. They're going to be back uh, September 26th at uh, Rom- Romero's K9 Club and Tap House. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, bell time for the, the stuff there will be 8 p.m. The free stuff on Twitch, right? Starts at 6? Yeah, so you'll have uh, – w- when you go on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro. You can just search Rocky Mountain Pro on Twitch. It will, the pre-show will be live at six and we'll be discussing, you know, what happened to Milestone moving towards uh, the tapings and we're bringing back Ignition also. So Ignition has been our second show and we've had it multiple times throughout the history of the company and it more features the younger talent, the, 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 the people training at the school, getting an opportunity to get some, some, uh, some television time on a different show and then that's going to be, I think, from 7.30 to 8 Mountain Time. You'll see Ignition stream that will lead into Charge, and that's when it will go into subscriber only for the tapings of Charged. That's awesome. That's awesome. I cannot wait. 
So for the listeners out there that would like to join in attendance, how could they do that, Yaden? So they can go to rmpwrestling.com and click on events. And actually, if you go to rmpwrestling.com, right there on the home page, you'll see like the news and right next to it is the calendar. And you can just click on that to get the tickets. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We'll dive back into a little bit more about Yaden here. We're on the meat segment of E's and B's podcast. Yaden, tell the people out there, who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, me too, man. That, you just That's can't. an easy one. Best promo, one of the best looks, had the best looking woman, if you know what I meant. Well, and you know what? You mentioned that, and that's what I tell people when they ask me why, if they say, what is it about him? And, and again, I wasn't watching wrestling at his height. Like, I wasn't really watching it, right? So I had to kind of go back and watch. But even while I wasn't watching it, I knew who he was and thought he was cool. And then when I really started getting into it in the late 90s, he was kind of doing he – was, he was more jacked up. Uh, he had gorgeous George with him. He had the slick black black hair and the real dark look, and it was just awesome. Dark, yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. I, I I had the chance to see a Nitro in Cleveland, Ohio. I think it was Cleveland. Oh, wow, it nice. might have been Columbus, but I think it was Cleveland. And Joe, one of the guys that worked at the, the Beanie Wagon there that got me into Oh, yeah, it. yeah, anyway. yeah. So I'm, I feel very fortunate that I got to see him live. He didn't have a match that night, but I still got to see him. And I remember walking, like, past him in the, in the hallway. He, he was coming around with his bag, and, like, we walked past him. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah, it was just yeah. something about everything he did. But when you look at his whole career, he was, to me, everything. Like, if you built a wrestler and you wanted all of the top uh, characteristics, like the Macho Man had him because the athleticism, the build, the, the flamboyance, the promo, the, the, the gorgeous valet, like, mm. could, could be a, a, an amazing uh, baby face, was also an amazing heel. Yes, he just yes. was everything that professional wrestling is to me. So that's why he sits at the top as far as my favorites of all time. Yeah, and I absolutely 100% agree with you. One of my – one of the things I kind of wish that wouldn't have happened was, you know, McMahon kind of slowing him down, throwing him in the booth there at the end of the career, and then he transferred over to WCW and showed him – he still, you know, showed everybody he still had something in the tank. I think that they kind of oh, – yeah. Yeah. Kind of cut him off a little short, but you know how that you know how it goes in the business. It's just right, right. What's hot right now is what's hot, and that's just how it goes. Uh, to tell the fans out there a little bit about yourself, what's the favorite thing that you like about being the uh, I wouldn't call it the trainer, maybe um, the coach of the all coach, these yeah. of yeah, all these usually... young students. What's your favorite thing that you like about that? It just seeing people, seeing people succeed seeing people do things that they either know is a very difficult thing to accomplish or and a lot of times the doing things they never thought they could they could they could do and 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 pushing their own limits and succeeding I think that's the you know I'm trying to kind of bounce around in my head how to exactly put it but watching people succeed watching people live the dream watching people do something so unique so rare like professional wrestling and, and just seeing them live their dreams is, is a huge, huge thing for us. Uh, it's the most satisfying thing I've ever done in, in pro wrestling, to be able to, to get someone in there. You know they have a love for professional wrestling. They sign up for the school, and then seeing them from day one and having this entire team of, of coaches and, and, and high, you know, higher-ranking students that help cultivate this great culture – uh, of of hard work and and togetherness and unity and then seeing these people come together to lift themselves up to lift others up and then watching them go out and perform and they get it just you could see it in their eyes especially when they've come back through the curtain after after their first match it's like oh, oh I did it that's that's what it's all about and and just seeing that is what is, is what I'm I'm most fond of when it comes to coaching and that's that's what it takes you know that's you know that's what we're gonna punch home is just the People like you, you know, put put the uh, desire and the drive and a lot of others, and they go, you know, miles with it. And mm-hmm. it's proven fact, like you said earlier, just we could go through a number of talents that you guys have trained and and uh, put through the ringer, if you want to say. But um, before we wind down here, uh, is there any chance we could maybe get a little peek underneath the ring skirt of what's going to maybe come up this Saturday? So I uh, next, don't, no, excuse me, next Saturday. Michael. Next Saturday, right, the 26th. We, we're not 100% sure uh, exactly uh, who, who is taking on who yet. I mean, it's still, we're still looking at the fallout from Milestone 10. Yeah. 
sure. so you, JK pop, uh, where, where they were able to retain the tag titles, but I don't talk about that very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Maybe, get, maybe get some revenge, man. That's so about, yeah, well, right? Leo Curtis and I had our opportunity. That was our rematch from the Pepsi center show when they were able to capture them in the six man tag, but uh, Curtis and I are doing some retooling, trying to figure things out. We'll actually be in Salt Lake city, Utah this weekend, uh, competing in devotion championship wrestling. Uh, our, our friends there in Salt Lake city also, by the way, uh, DCW, they are affiliated with Ohio Valley wrestling and they are an yes. ASWA Academy as well. So we're going to be out there with several other Rocky mountain pro talent and the great, the great people of, uh, of DCW. And Curtis and I are going to try to get, get kind of get our, uh, our flow back, get back into things. So when we get back on the 26th, we'll, uh, we'll be better prepared for whatever is thrown oh. at us. But Dustin Yurick successfully retained the Rocky Mountain Pro Championship. And as you saw, I mean, everything went, went out with, with this new kind of like faction that he's forming. Right. With the assistance uh, with Damon Ace and then the returning Mario Vanger. So we're, you know, tune in to see what's going to happen with all of that. Starting to see for sure. Lockett's championship was not decided. Uh, so, you know, Lilith Grimm and Heidi Howitzer had uh, – they had wrestled each other earlier in the night and then, and then an attack on Ali Gatto and Rochelle Riveter, both returning to Rocky Mountain Pro, by the way, to compete for that vacated Lockett's title that was held by Abaddon. Before Abaddon, she, right, right. Before she went to AEW. So there's so much still going that's in flux. I really don't know. I mean, what about, I, I, I'm, as, I'm as in the dark as you are. As what, about, as what about Jumbo? Jumbo going to be around? Jumbo will be there. He uh, defended that Ignition title. And the fun thing is now that Ignition is returning, because that's where that Ignition title is. Right, right. He's the Ignition. He'll stand yeah. atop Ignition, and we'll see kind of – if who who which of the new uh, new kids want to take a crack at him? So see if any new like, talents got what it takes. Jumbo's. Right. If and he, then we also had uh, a new charge champion uh, crowned as uh, Bruce Wayans, Bruce Wayans. Uh, yes, unseated sir. Lipto in that triple threat with Atiba Lipto and Bruce Wayans. He's been all over social media. If you're not following Bruce hey. Wayans, follow him. He's all over the place. Have you seen it with on, that, on with Twitter? That? I love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's all over it. So a lot. Of I good hope stuff to get though. him on the show sometime in the if future. You, you know what? I'll I'll talk to him. He'll come on and talk to you. He's uh. Well, Curtis Cole calls him the yellow lab of Rocky Mountain Pro because he's just all <laughs> over the place, and it's, it's funny. But, yeah, we'll get him on here for you. Well, definitely. Yeah, and I tell you what, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you on. Thank Once you. Once again, folks, it's Romero's K9 Club Tap House, Saturday the 26th, bell time, 8 p.m. for the, the uh, charged event. Ignition will start 6 p.m., we're thinking – uh, when I get more information from you, Aiden, folks, I'll get it on my webpage. Hopefully, we'll have maybe a fight card prior to the show. I'll be repeating this coming up all the way up until the 26th. Hey, Aiden, I want to know, is there anything out there you want to plug before we get off here? No, I mean, you, you kind of covered it all. I mean, if you want to follow the social medias, if you want to follow Rocky Mountain Pro, rmpwrestling.com is the main page. And then we try to make it easy for everybody across all platforms. So Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, it's at the Rocky MTN Pro to find uh, info, news, and events. And if you want to follow us on Twitch, again, twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro. That's where we're streaming the most. That's where we're airing the most. You can also find us on the Fight app. You can find us on Impact Plus. Uh, and Right Now TV, we'll be making our return to Right Now TV. The episodes will be sent to them by mid-October. So look up Right Now TV. Check your local listings. You can also stream that online, rightnowtelevision.com. If you want to follow our Twitch-specific social media, that kind of gives you all the alerts when we're going live and – the new show's coming on Twitch. It's at RMP on Twitch across all social media. And then my social media platforms are all at Mercury Aiden against, uh, or, um, across Twitter, uh, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. So that's where you can find us. That's where you can find me. And uh, we hope to see all of you there. Like I said, Mercury Aiden, it's been a pleasure to have you on. I know we had a little bit of miscommunication for a little bit trying to get up to each other but i'm glad to be having you right. here on the ease and bees podcast and I, like i said i'll be promoting you guys hard and heavy and i can't wait to see some live action in person man appreciate it appreciate it a lot i appreciate you reaching out get us on and you know let me know we'll try to get some of the other uh, talent here at rocky mountain pro on here to, to chat with you absolutely once again guys charge coming back september 26th at ramiro's canine club and tap house it's gonna be a good show be there or be on Twitch. All right, Yaden. Thanks again, buddy. Have a good Thank day, you. and we'll talk to you guys soon. Talk to you again.